Hey everybody, welcome back to the Archipelago. Let's continue. Now, uh, a couple dumb little mistakes I made um, in the first part of the video. When I had just paid that four bucks to use Jen's scout action, uh, or her scout card, I forgot to actually put my worker down to indicate that I was doing the explore. So I do the explore and then I paid the money to make a double explore by using Jen. So I forgot that. And the other thing was, we both now, do I've done two explores, Jen does one. We found a bunch more, I forgot, we have found more native huts. Like this one I just laid down, there are one, two, three huts on there. In total, there are now seven huts in the, in the colonies. So we're actually all the way up here on the out of work indigenous population. Now, it's not to the point yet where they're gonna start, it's gonna ferment revolt or anything. You know, we'd have to be on the next row before that happens, but people are closer to unhappiness. And more importantly, we're not in the nice, happy, negative one line anymore. So we did not automatically, so we're actually at two. Because the originally Jen had charged taxes, which made it up one. I moved it back down one because I thought we were at the negative one, we weren't. So we're actually at two because of that uh, what do you call it? The fish we didn't send home and the taxation. So, a couple dumb little mistakes about that. Sorry. But anyway, let's continue now, shall we? Okay. I just made my first move, which was a big old explorer. That was awesome. Jen was very unhappy with that. And let me tell you why. I actually clue her a little bit in on her cards. She's got this one that scores bonus points for explorers. So she wants to be the one with the most explore tokens, which is why she's, you know, jumping into exploring like crazy. She got, you know, boned on the first one, and then she got this scout, but then I used her scout. So she's having a hard time actually successfully doing the secret objective, even though nobody knows, but I've, I've got three now to her two. So she's gonna have to get some more if she wants to come in first place, because currently I'm gonna get three points and she's gonna get two points. So there's that issue. And then the other thing she needs to do, she needs to build churches. Um, and for her, the game is going to end when four ports have been made or four towns have been made. So that's not going to happen for quite a while. But so she's going to, what you're going to be noticing she's going to be doing is starting to build churches. And meanwhile, me, if you remember what I'm all about, I want to get a lot of fish. And I want to, if at all possible, have both a town center and a uh, port built so I can score my bonus pointsy things. And then, of course, also, we both want to have a lot of money. And currently, Jen's doing much better on that than me because I just blew a lot of money to do my, my, ex, my safe explore. But anyway, enough about all that. It's Jen's turn. What is she going to do? I think, as I mentioned, because you now know that she is secretly after churches, she is going to do the build action. She's come over here. Because again, you never know when the game's going to end. I mean, she might have a lot of time. She might need to get this church out immediately. She is going to come over here and do the building action. And if you look at our our player, our player shields also are nice and need little bits of information. So, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. oh, you know what? Actually, I'm sorry. Jen should have had one more buck. I only charged her. She only got taxes for her people. She also gets taxes for her boats. She should have one more buck from the first turn. There's another mistake I made. Oopsie, she's even richer. So, Jen, to build a church needs two stone. Oh, oh, she only has one stone. So, she is, what's she gonna do? First thing she's gonna do is she's gonna harvest. And if we come over here, she's choosing to harvest stone. So, this guy gets to work harvesting stone. So, she now has two stone to her name. Very nice. And so now it's my turn. I've got another worker. I think I'm gonna breed again. So I can, yeah, so I can basically get yet another person. And the only place I can reproduce is on this tile where there are two guys. And so there's another worker that's been added. So we come over here. Our colony has gotten one bigger. And, you know, the bigger the colony is, the more it can withstand, you know, attempts at revolt. Because the revolt thing has to pass the actual colony size. So I've just helped us by making our colony bigger. Yay me. Let's see. Now, Jen, she's got two more actions. Now... She's going to build the um, church. And so again, if we look on the cheat, the church requires two stone and one florin, one dollar. So we come over here. Here's her two stone. It just gets uh, thrown away. And her one dollar, that goes away. And she has now, where are they? Which one is it? It's, she has now successfully built a church. And now the church had to be built by somebody. It can't be built by this guy because he's already busy harvesting stone. So it had to be built by this guy over here. 
So she'll just go on ahead and put the church in this zone. And this is the guy who built it. And you can tell he built it because he's standing on top of it. That's the indicator that he built it. So he can't do anything else. All, Jen's two workers cannot engage in any other activities. They can't go and explore. They can't, um, you know, they can't, they can't migrate. They can't do anything because this one has harvested some stone and this one is busy working on church. And now it's my turn again. I've got one more action. And now if you remember what I need to do, I want to get a lot of fish. I also want to build these things. To get fish, it helps. The only way you can harvest fish is with a boat. I've got one boat. I'd like to get another boat. I want to build a boat, particularly since I've got a lot of wood. Do I? Yes, I do. I'm going to build a boat. So I am also going to put my worker. And again, you know, this is one of those spaces where there's no, any number of players can come and do this action. So I'm going to do a build and I'm going to build a boat. It requires um, one wood and one dollar, so I'm almost broke now. I'm gonna need to do some taxation pretty soon. And I have built a new boat. So we come over here. This boat had to be built by somebody too, and it had to be somebody who is not busy. Now, uh, currently none of these people are busy. I haven't actually sent any of them off to do anything yet. But I will say this is the guy over here who successfully built this boat. Well done, little guy, and now I've got another boat. And now Jen has one more action. Remember, she can't do actions that would use her people. So what does she want to do? She can't migrate because people, she can buy and sell stuff on the public market. Uh, she could build something more. No, she can't build because she needs people. She can't harvest. She can't reproduce. She could tax. She could get another three bucks. And remember, money is important in this game. But I think, I think she now, yeah, she is going to hire some of the local indigenous population. She's going to come here. So, we come over here. Now, Jen can hire as many people as she wants. She can hire, there are seven people out of work. She could hire all seven if she had the money for it, but she doesn't. She's gonna hire one, and that costs three. Two, and that costs three more. She's gonna hire two guys, and that cost her one, two, three, four, five, six. Almost all of her cash is now gone. One, two, three, four, five, ah, uh, six. Okay. And that got her, so it moved down two. The colony is increased by two because she has converted those local indigenous people into new settlers. And she could put them anywhere where she currently has people. She'll put one in each because then she can um, have both, uh, you know, she can do more breeding. She can have both these areas breed next round. Okay, so she has a higher small population. And now, you know, one could argue and it's another opportunity for negotiation. You say, hey, I'm gonna hire some people, but they're gonna cost me a lot. You wanna help subsidize that? Because you know it'll bring um, the information, and you know, it'd be up to me if I wanna help with that. Again, you can negotiate over everything in this game if you, if you want. Um, the game actively encourages it. Okay, so anyway, oops, that guy's busy. This guy's not busy. Oh, I'm sorry, this guy was busy, and this guy's not busy. Okay, so that was Jen's last action. I've done my actions. Nobody actually did the Minister of Agriculture. You know, I guess on my last turn, I would have done this too, because there's no reason not to. Add two cattle and or exotic fruit to the domestic market from the bank. Let's say I did that. Let's say I added, oh, one cattle and one fruit. Just because uh, I could, because I had a minister of agriculture. So I wanted to get that done too. Just so there's more stuff out there for me to buy or to deal with potential disasters and stuff like that that might come up. Okay, so I done diddly done that. All right, that was the all the actions. And now we move on to the Evolution card purchase. We come up here, and now I'm totally broke. I, I say, you know, I have two bucks, and I don't know it, but Jen has one buck, so I don't think there's gonna be much buying this time. And if nobody, if you don't actually buy one of these cards, what that means is um, you have to till, you have to twist two of them to lower their prices. And since I'm not, I don't have ten bucks, nine bucks. I almost have three. Oh, I could buy the bishop with two bucks. I could buy the bishop. <sighs> but see. The bishop is one of those cards that, you know, it doesn't implicitly benefit me. The only thing the bishop does is it gives me the opportunity to spend my own money to put down revolt. And now that's something that benefits everybody. So if I were to get the bishop, you know, later on I could say, hey, does anybody want me to use my bishop? Well, you know, help me, help me pay for the cost of this thing. Again, another opportunity to negotiate. Because otherwise, why would I even get this card? Um, you know, if, 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 you know, it'd just be completely altruistic. Out of the goodness of my own heart, I'll have a bishop and I'll keep spending my own money to do it. But again, you know, everybody can use the bishop as well once it's been bought. But I'm not going to buy him. Uh, and instead, so I've got to tilt two things. Remember, I wanted the headhunter. So I'm going to tilt him one. 
So he is now four. And next turn I'll tax and I'll be able to get him. And I gotta tilt one more. And I guess I wanna make the queen a little bit cheaper too. So now she was for nine and now she's seven. And that was the end of my turn, I didn't do either. And now Jen, it's up to her. Now, why, I, we don't know, but she only has one buck. She can't afford anything. She's gonna tilt this pyramid because she'd really like to take a go with that because that's, you know, that's two victory points right there. So she's done that and it's worth five. And she's gotta tilt another one. I, think, I guess she'll tilt this road so they become even cheaper as well. Or, you know what, she sees that I have been tilting this headhunter knowing, or supposing that maybe I want it because I've been trying to get it lower. For her last thing, she's gonna tilt it and wipe it out. So then I won't, it'll be gone and I won't have a chance to use it. And now if I want it, I can say, hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 maybe you don't want to do that. And I could bribe her not to do that. I could give her a buck or two or, or maybe some wood or whatever to stop her from doing that because I really want to buy that next turn. But you know what, I'm not going to do that. Um, and so she's going to, and boom, it's gone. It's been removed from the game. And that means a new thing comes out. It's the Minister of Labor, a, another guy who is all altruistic. Using, buying him and then using him basically reduces the out-of-work population because, oh, the Minister of Labor finds work for them. And what do you know? Hey, we just revealed a new crisis in the export. And one we have to resolve right now. We have to get two cattle to the old world or the old world will be unhappy. I'm still first player, so I'm the first person to deal with it. I don't have any, but remember I put that cattle in the market. So I'll say, sure, what the heck, I'll put this cattle, but we still need one more. I don't have any cattle. And so I pass. I say, I'm not gonna help anymore. Jen says, I'm not gonna help either. So, because we need to give up two and we didn't, we only got rub one. The uh, we're getting that much closer to revolt. I guess you could assume the old country has some uh, you know influence in the new country, and so they can form a revolt too or something like that. But anyway, so that got revealed. We got rid of one of the two cattle, but not both. That was the end of the uh, second round. The se so we are, we have now thirty years have passed. Fifteen years in the first, fifteen years in the second. Let's go one more round, shall we? So which means first of all we start with disengagement, which means everything untaps. People get off. They're the things to see. So, right, right. And, um, and now this is interesting. This guy on the church, you know, he was engaged last time because he was building it. Now I have the option, uh, or he's disengaged. He's not building anymore, but I don't move him off the church. Uh, he still counts as somebody that I could send off to like, you know, harvest or explore or whatever. But as long as he stays on the church, Jen is in control of this church and gets the benefit of the church. Although remember, and you remember Jen wants to have the benefit of that church because she wants to be in control of churches at the end of the game. And so, you know, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, does Jen have a bonus? Does she get bonuses for church? Because why did she build that church so early? She's not really benefiting from it. She must want churches. And now I got to think in the back of my head, oh crap, do I got to get a church out? Because if I don't, I'm leaving points on the table. So now I got to add to my list of things to do, build a church because Jen kind of tipped her hat a little bit with that church. Anyway, though, Jen um, doesn't have to move him off. He is available, but as long as he stays on the church, as long as she doesn't have him do something else, she benefits from the church. So anyway, so we have done our disengagement, and now we do order of play. And um, let's see. Now, it's starting to get kind of interesting. Maybe we do actually want to fight for order. So his roads are there. Oh, the pyramid is there. The pyramid's down to five now. And if it, if it gets reduced one more time, it'll be gone. Jen has been reducing that. She definitely wants to get that pyramid. And if she allows me to be first, I might make it go away before she ever gets a chance to buy it. So I think this time she actually wants to be first. Now me, I'm still just playing, you know, I don't want to blow any of my cash. So I revealed nothing. But Jen, on her, she took a chance and she revealed. So she did spend a buck. And for her trouble, she gets to choose. Now, she can be first player if she wants, or she could say, well, I'll let you continue to be first player if you make it worth my while. And I'm like, well, I'll give you a buck for it. <laughs> um, but then she spent a buck, you know, so I, I, I'd have to like give her two bucks or something like that. Anyway, so she is now first player, which means she'll be able to get that pyramid if she wants it. But remember, she's out of cash, so she's gonna need to do some taxation to get it. So we have now changed the order of play. We do the population effects, come over here, Still, even though the fish is full, nothing, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Almost one more wood in the market and we have an effect. No effects in the export markets How, and no effect here, no either plus or minus. So there are no population effects yet. Then we do the balance of the archipelago where 
We don't have to worry about the export market this time because the flash thing has already been taken care of. But as long as this card stays out every turn, the local market is going to be demanding exotic fruit. Jen is the first player. She has the option to do something about it. And so since we have this crisis, again, everybody flops on their side and insists that they're very unhappy about the goings on. However, there's one other thing. Because Jen has somebody in a church here, the benefit of having a church is the person in the church and everybody else on that tile that belongs to her doesn't get flipped. Or, and I, if I recall correctly, she can, can, she can specify anybody. So if I had some people there, I could bribe her to have my person not get flipped either. So this guy is fine. So two of Jen's guys and three of my guys are down. And if they don't get satisfied, um, then there will be, they won't work. And the, popula the uh, revolt will go up higher. So how do they get satisfied? If we give up one pineapple, six people will be satisfied. So... And Jen's up first, she has to decide, and well, you know, there happens to be some pineapple, she'll go on ahead and do it. Pineapple comes out of the domestic market, and so it's fine, everybody gets back up. But you can imagine with more players, if we were playing a three or four or five player game, one pineapple would not get everybody back up. We'd have to use more pineapple, and then things would start to get interesting. Because if there was only one pineapple in the whole game, and the first player is the one who chose how to spend that pineapple, everybody would say, hey, stand my guy up. No, stand my guy up. I'll give you a buck to stand my guy up. I'll give you two bucks to stand my guy up. And then once again, an opportunity for negotiation. But in a two-player game, we find that almost never happens because it's so easy to meet the needs of the people. It's really weird these cards didn't scale. It seems like in a two-player game, um, one pineapple should maybe only take care of three people. But whatever. Anyway, I'll talk about that more in Final Thoughts. So we had a crisis, it was pineapple, Jen took care of it, and um, now we move on to our actions, and oops, I didn't take all the guys off. Jen is first, and I think, well, first thing Jen would like to do, she wants to use her scout, but she's used up all her money, so she can't pay three, oh, I'm just going to get my workers. So I think the first thing she's going to do, well, she could do her taxes, she doesn't want to do the taxes because she needs the cash, she needs the cash money, uh, so I think she will, she will go ahead and do some taxing. And she gets one, two, three, four, five bucks, and the people are go up one in unhappiness. That was her first action. Now, and I'm like, maybe I should do that too, because I know Jen just got five bucks, and money counts in this game, but I don't need money right now. What I really want to do is get going on my, um, you know, my bonus point conditions. But I do have to worry about getting food, but I can worry about that later. I've got two bucks. Am I really planning on buying anything? Uh, yeah, maybe I should. Oh, I'm going to tax too. There's only two space for it, so I tax. I all, let's see, I get one, two, three, four, five, six bucks for my total because I've got a bigger population. In fact, actually, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Jen, before she taxed, her first thing she was going to do, I, I, I should have thought about this better. First thing she did was she did population growth. She's got these two guys here, they get it on, have a, uh, and these two. So Jen just actually, with one action, went from four six. So two more people have been added to the colony. So once again, we're in no real danger of, a, of any kind of revolt. And um, that was her action. And I am still going to get a hint tax on mine, so I get six bucks. One, or do I want to, do I want to? Reproduce two, because, well, this guy won't, but I'll get another, per but I'll only get one person if I reproduce. Ah, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to tax. So I get my six bucks. Okay. And now Jen is going to tax as well. She gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And every ta church you have gives you two, I think. Is that right? Yes. When you tax, every church is two. So Jen just got nine bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bucks. So she is loaded. She is in the money again. One, two, three, four. She can definitely afford now to get that pyramid and start working on building it. Although it's going to need a lot of stone. And there isn't much stone in the game yet. So that was her turn. Although I, I know she's got nine bucks. I don't know how much she has total. Now my next action. So I've got enough money I could pay to use her scout again. But I'm not going to do that. I've explored enough. Because what do I need to do? I need to start getting my boat on. And I think to do that, I'm going to have a migration. So let's go, where's the migration? Where is it? Here. I'm going to do the migration action. And what that means is, I get now every single piece of wood I've got in the colony gets the opportunity to move one space. The ships can move to different um, ocean spaces, and the people can move to different um, people spaces. So I think for starters, I am going to move this ship out here so that it can basically start harvesting all this no, I'm going to move this ship over here so it can start. No, I'm going to move this ship over here so it can start harvesting this fish. 
And next, I want this person, um, I could have this person move over here so that he could start harvesting wood over here, but I want this person to move over to this little island I've discovered so I can start um, you know, taking control of this island too. Now to do that, he's gonna have to do, a, he's gonna have to travel by ship. So what I can do is, since there's a ship right here, I can move this ship so it is connecting both of these tiles. That indicates that this ship is now a bridge. And so what I can do is, now this making the ship a bridge doesn't count as its movement. So I haven't moved the ship yet, I've just made a bridge. This guy is gonna move to the new island. That was his movement. If I want, I could have another person move over here to the new island, but I'm not gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna leave these two here because they can um, breed and they can get, uh, you know, and this person I guess will just stay over here. Um, and now, the only thing that hasn't moved yet, this ship hasn't officially moved. So I'm gonna officially move this ship as well. I'm gonna put it out here in the ocean also. And that was my migration. I, everybody moved around. I used a, oh, and I should say one thing, I won't get a chance to do it in this game, but let's say I do a migration later. I could put a ship here. Oh, I don't have a good example of it. You can actually, but basically what I was gonna say is, you can make a, a chain of ships that could let a person move all the way across you know, a big body of water as well, but I'm not doing that right now, but you can move across big water. If you have multiple ships, they can, you can you can put one of your people smack dab in the middle of somebody else's territory and all kinds of stuff like that. But anyway, so I've moved these, that, that was my migration. Now Jen, she has one more action and gosh darn it, she is going to explore. All right, and she is gonna pay three bucks to use her scout. Finally, she gets a chance to use it. So she'll get to two, have two explorations. First of all, she decides if she wants to keep this. I think she will because she knows it'll work. Or does she? Yes, she does. So she doesn't want to take a chance. She's just gonna take this one. She knows it works um, because she can put it here like this and you'll notice the mountain lines up, the land lines up, and she's gotten herself um, wood and iron. And she found one, two, three huts. So one, two, three, and now we're into the line where there are enough out of work people that they're upset. So she found, and now she gets to do it. Oh, and of course she gets an explorer token. And she gets, um, uh, there's a wood and an iron. I think she'll take the iron for herself. Will she? Does she want the iron? Uh, well, the main thing about iron is you can sell it. Uh, iron is not used in construction of anything, but it's great for selling um, into the foreign and domestic market. It's a great way to make money. Uh, iron is worth six bucks. Right now, it is the most valuable cube in the game. And, let's see, she want the iron or she want wood? I think she'll take the wood and she'll put the iron on the market. Okay, so she's got more wood, which she'll be able to use to build more stuff. That was her first action. Now she, remember, because of her scout, she gets to do a second one. She's got this guy, which is completely, so, eh. she could put this here because this boat could explore out into that ocean space. But then she, and then interestingly, she's creating, she's creating the potential to do a land bridge and connect our two um, lands. But I don't think she wants that. So she's gonna take a gamble and go for the next tile down, which is this one. And what did she get? And then she's revealed for later on just a 100% land. So can she put this any place? Yes, she can, I think she can. She has to put it next to two things. So she can put it like this. Ah, but the mountains don't quite match, unfortunately. And there is no mountain on the other side, so she can't put it there. She can put it here, no she can't. Here, no she can't, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, she can put it, no, oh no, I think she can't. Oh no, she can, she can. She can place it like this. All right, so she has found, uh, she could do it there. Yeah, because her ship moved here to find it. And so she's gotten another explore token. And she, I think she'll take a fish for herself and she will put a wood in, um, no, if she puts a wood in the domestic market, wood will get cheaper, but people will be unhappy. So instead she's gonna put a fish in the domestic market so as not to put us closer to the edge. All right, and so that was her big explore, and now she's got four tokens, and so she's feeling pretty happy about the situation again, knowing that she's in the lead on her secret objective. Okay, so that was her last action. Is, was it her last action? Yes, and I've got one more action. What am I gonna do? Okay, it is time to harvest some fish. Where is it? There we go. And because I've got my, my guys out here, fish, fish, I've just generated two fish. And now Jen's gotta ask herself, why is he building and going crazy for fish? Does he secretly want fish? And chances are, she's probably, I have again have tipped my hat, at least it's very, very likely that I'm trying to go for fish. And so now she's gotta put on her list of things to do. Hey, not only do I have to build a church, not only do I have to stay ahead of exploring, I gotta get some fish now. But of course, she doesn't have to go out and gather fish. There's plenty of fish to buy, on the market if she wants to buy it, 
but then she's cutting into the amount of money she has for the in-game bonus. Alrighty, so those are all our actions. And um, let's see, now we go on to card purchasing. Jen has first dibs, and she is definitely gonna buy this pyramid, which cost her five bucks, but fortunately she had the money from her taxation, and she now has a pyramid, um, which requires two action discs, five stone, and she will have to take one of her workers and permanently put it on here, so it's out of the game. It's very expensive, but it'll be worth two victory points. And also when she does it, the uh, revolt goes up by two because the people are very unhappy about this pyramid that was built in their land for some reason. Okay, so she's got the pyramid, which means a new card comes out, and a new disaster happens, and Jen has first dibs on resolving it. The old world wants pineapple. Jen will send, the, oh, but the old, there is no pineapple in the, um, the, the export market. Nobody's sold any there yet. So, I, there isn't any to give up. Uh, Jen's not gonna give up any. I don't have, neither is have any. So, one, two. Danger, Will Robinson. We are getting closer to losing the entire game because of revolt. We might have to start paying attention to that now. Okie doke. So, uh, oops, I'm sorry. And what was the thing that actually came out? It was the Admiral, which you can migrate. Oh, so you can basically migrate by using ship up to three regions. So it makes you more, it makes your sea migrations more powerful. And see, so that was Jen. Oh, wait, right. She still has to rotate one. <sighs> I guess she will. Let's see. If she rotates the queen, because she'd like to get that, because that guarantees first player, then on my turn, I'd be able to get it at five. So she doesn't want to rotate that. I think she will, instead, she'll rotate this bishop. Because that actually made the bishop, the longer he sticks around, he gets more expensive. So Jen did not help me by rotating that. Now it's my turn, I get to buy, I've got a lot of money, I should buy somebody. Uh, all your citizens may move one additional region. But you know what? I am not going to buy any. I, uh, I'm going to save my money because remember, you want money for the end of the game. So I'm just going to save my money in, which means I have to rotate two. I will rotate this queen so she's at her all-time cheapest. And I'll try to get first player next turn so that I can grab that while it's cheap. And I guess I'll just rotate the bishop and make him so expensive he's almost priced himself out of the market. All right, so that was the end of that. And then we would move on to the next turn where everything untaps. Oh, and by the way, I forgot, at some point during my turn, I used the Minister of Agriculture, because why wouldn't I? And I put two cattle in the cattle market, let's say. Okay, and so it's the new turn, everything untaps, the Scout, the Minister of Agriculture, order of play. Now this turn, I do want to be first, because I want to grab the Queen. So I'm gonna, I don't know how much money Jen has, but I just to cut my losses, I'm gonna reveal I have to spend two, which means I spent it, and Jen reveals Nothing, so I just blew two bucks, but I get first player again, so I'll have dibs on the queen. The reason Jen didn't is because she only had one buck left. And that's order of play, population effects. I think we do have some now. Nope, um, fish is on the edge, wood is on the edge. Oh, but again, uh, there's so much uh, people out of work that they are getting ever closer, ever closer, only three away from you know total anarchy chaos. All right, oh, everybody comes off their um, let's see, their, their spaces that they worked on. Jen's keeping this guy in the church. And now we have the balance of the archipelago where the people are demanding stone. If they don't get it, so everybody flops on their sides. Flop, 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 flop. Except for pe the people who are protected by Jen's church over there. So Jen is less concerned about this than I am. So a whole bunch of people are down. I'm the first player. I'm the one who has to pony up stone to give them up. I have no stone. There is one stone in the market, so I will go on ahead and donate it to the cause, which means I can put up five people. I will definitely put up one, two, three, four, and, but I have to put up a fifth, so I have to stand up one of Jen's. So I'll just stand up one of Jen's. And now I'll say, I'm not going to help anymore. I'm not going to, uh, you know, because I have no more stone. I can't do anything with it. And I'll pass on to Jen. Does Jen want to do anything about the example? We need to get, she needs another stone to get her other two people up. Unfortunately, she has no stone. She spent it. Um, building her church, and so her last two people are not going to get up. They are not going to work this turn, and what that means is these two people will be sowing active revolt for the next 15 years, which means we go up one, two more, and now we are dangerously close to losing the entire game because neither Jen nor I could stop this. You know, even if we wanted to, even if we wanted to work together, there is just no stone to be had to, and there's now, there's only one stone generator in the entire island, the one that Jen has, and there's no stone to be bought in the market, so we've got a bit of a problem here. Um, but fortunately, that's hopefully a stone card will go away because somebody will buy a card, which makes that stone card go away. 
And that was the end of the balance of our cargo, and now we can start doing actions again. Let's see, should I just do, well, let's just do three more actions, and then we'll, we'll call it a day, I think. Okay, I'm first now. Do I want to get some more fish? I think I do. I just want to, I'm just going to solidify the fish once and for all. So I'm going to harvest some fish. There is no way Jen's going to catch up on the fish now. Look at all that fish I got. Yummy. Um, although all Jen needs is one fish and she will come in second place. In a two player game, you know, the difference between coming in first and second place is only one point. As long as she holds on to one fish, she's not too terribly worried. And I mean, now that she's not, I don't think she's going to, she's going to make sure she has one fish at the end of the game. Okay. That was my first action. I harvested some fish. Jen's first action. Let's see. Scar, scar, scar thing. Um, she's going to attack. Oh, well, she wants to tax. But if she does, we will be right on the edge. Right on the edge. Oh, dear. And now we have to start playing much smarter now. Um, because, okay, we know we'll get rid of this card. Because somebody will buy a card or make a card disappear, so this card will go away. So we'll, we won't need to have stone, but we will need to have something on the market to placate people. What can she do? Now, if she were to hire some people, that could, um, you know... You know. Yikes. Okay. Well... She could reproduce, which will increase. I think that's what she's going to do. Oh, well, that's just going to create more problems for us later. But she's going to get herself some more workers. She is going to reproduce, which means um, she can generate a person. Oh wait, oh, oh oh, actually, she can generate a person here, but not here because people who are revolting, they do not have time for the baby making. So she would only generate one person by reproducing. But she doesn't want to reproduce because that will increase the size of the colony and help protect us from revolt because we've kind of mismanaged it and it's gotten away from us now. Uh, oh dear. Or, or does she just go on ahead and say, to heck with it, and she's going to tax because it won't end the game, and then it'll be up to me to ensure, yeah, with tax. she's going to do it. She's going to go crazy. She's going to tax. One, or, I, see, I think you can still tax. Can you tax people who are revolting? No, you can't. I think you can, oh yeah. So she gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars. Oh, this is so crazy. And it's right there on the edge. One more and the whole game is over. But we'll just have to work together to avoid that, won't we? Okay, now she knows full well I'm not gonna tax anybody, so she's just fixed it so I can't make any money. My first action, and, and, but in, at the same time, she's pretty much guaranteed she's ahead on points. Now me, the game's so close, what I wanna do is end this game as fast as I can. I don't think we're gonna get our population up to 20 anytime soon, but if um, there's two, if I can get three more person cards into play, the game is over. Now I can't come out and tell you, it's a secret, you can't tell your opponent what the end conditions are. And so, but I'm gonna try and get this done quick as I can. Because, oh, but that means, because I know I'm gonna get the fish. But I really do want to get this one as well. If I don't build a port, let's see, I gotta start working on this port and market while ensuring we don't um, fall apart. To build a port, I need fish and stone. To build a market, I need cattle and fruit. So I need fruit and cattle right now. So I'm gonna harvest some cattle. All right, where's my worker discs? Harvesting the cattle. This guy and this guy are getting to work. Oh, wait, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, or actually should they, I think first of all, yeah, before they work, I'm gonna actually reproduce so that we get another guy in the colony, which buys us a little bit of time. And that was my first action. Jen's action. Yeah, with that, she will follow suit. She will also reproduce. Oh, but no, she can't. She can't. Because these two guys are revolting, so they won't do it. These two guys could get on, but there's a rule. You can never have more than three of a person in a zone. So she cannot reproduce. So she's not going to do that. She could hire some more workers, and the workers are at a low, low price of three. And I just made all that money. And she just made all that money, so I think she's saying, yeah, she's gonna hire some more workers. She wants to put some of the local people to work, because that's just, that's just part of, or, let's see. So she'll just buy one, so that costs her five, and she figures she's still in the lead on, on cash. So that means she bought one, they still stay at three, but the, uh, what do you call it, the, the archipelago has increased by one again, and she's gotten another worker. <gasps> but no, she's not gonna do it, because she doesn't have any room to put, and she would have to migrate before she can do this. So, hold on. Let's put that back. 
give her her three bucks back. And the first thing she's gonna do is actually migrate. She is going to spread her folks out a little bit and give them some breathing room. Before this guy gets um, you know, sucked into all their, all right, so this guy's gonna move over here. This guy is going to sail over here. Um, so she's got this new island. In fact, well, it's too bad. If she had two boats, she could actually hopscotch and get over to my island as well. But she's gonna move over there to that island. And she's going to leave this guy here so they can reproduce. And if these people ever get over themselves, they'll reproduce. Right, okay, so these people are able to reproduce. Okay, so she's done with her migration. Now it's my turn again. I've got one more action. Let's see. And I've got my cattle. And I, oh, I need some fruit. I need some delicious tropical fruit to build my marketplace. So I'm actually going to go to the market action. Where I'm going to pay four bucks. An incredibly high cost to buy the only piece. Oh, wait, oh, no, no, no. First of all, first of all, first of all. Before I do this, I am going to add two cattle and or dog fruit. I'm going to add two fruit to the market, which by the way, you'll notice, just knocked the price down from four to three. So I only had to pay three bucks to get one of these fruit. So thanks, Minister of Agriculture. And now, um, oh, wait, oh, I was going to, I was going to get harvest cattle. What did I do? Oh, I reproduced and I did harvest cattle. I just forgot to do it. All right. So there's my cattle harvest, harvest, these two guys. Oh, and this guy. So I got three cattle, one, two, three. Look at all this cattle. I've got my fruit. So next year I will be able to build my um, marketplace, um, which is half of what I need to do for my bonus thing. Also, when I successfully build my marketplace, that means I can start throwing money in here as an action, which allows me to have a more efficient means of interacting. I get to do double interactions with the local market. But anyway, that'll be later. That was my last move. Jen's done her last move. Wait a minute. No, she hasn't. Oh yeah, she's got one more move. And so now she could breed uh, with these two guys to get another worker. But you know what? The, the gap, she's not worried about that. So what's she going to do instead? <sighs> I think she will harvest some wood. Okay. So this guy harvests, coming off the church, and this guy harvests, and this guy harvests. She just got four wood. One, two, three, four. And I would almost have to wonder, does she, need, does she have a wood bonus she's after? But with this wood, she can build um, boats now. She can, it helps her build towns. Or more importantly, she could sell them. She could sell them into the um, local market for three a pop, or later on, she could sell them into the foreign market for seven. You send this new, a, new world wood back to the old world, they will pay you in droves. And that means then there'd be some stuff in case there is an old world demand for um, you know, wood if she sells it um, into that space. So that was her last move. Then um, we have, once as always, the evolution card. I'm buying first. I have two bucks left. I can't afford any of these things. So, all right, well, and I, I can't afford the queen because I had intended to tax, but then I couldn't tax because Jen did. So I'm not going to buy the queen, so I'm just going to make things cheaper. I guess I'll make the roads cheaper. Hopefully so much so that Jen will buy it rather than wipe out my queen. And I'll make the minister of labor cheaper. Or no, actually he stays the same. Okay, that was my turn. Jen's turn. She's got a lot of money. She is definitely going to buy something because she does not want this stone card to stick around. And she's going to buy that queen. That I did all the work to lower the price, and now she grabs the queen, which pretty much means she's guaranteed to be first player for the rest of the game. Also, she doesn't realize it, but there are now three people, three car character cards. Two more come out, the game is over. So she's hastening the end of the game, without even knowing it. So a new card, let's see, it's the Explore. Um, during the exploration, take three hexagons from the deck instead of, oh, so it makes exploring a lot safer. And we have a flash, we have a flashing, oh, but it's a good one. It's not a bad one. The flash thing is, for every church that's been built, the um, revolt goes down by one. Thanks, religion, for pacifying Matthew. Thank goodness for that good old opiate of the masses. So, Jen previously built a church. So that means, thanks to that church, we go down one on the track for danger. Things are under control again. But the foreign market is going to start demanding cattle. And currently, we have not sold any cattle to the foreign market, so that's going to be an issue. But, um, let's see, so Jen bought one. She has to tilt one as well. Let's see, we know we're not going to be able to make that cattle. So she's going to tilt this bishop, get him out of the game. A new card comes out, which is the exporter, um, which costs money, but you can buy or sell on the number, so it makes buying and selling better. And hey, another flash thing happens. It's, a, it's the same thing. Because of her church, the revolt goes down by one more, 
And um, the local thing is we have to deliver pineapple to the people, and there's plenty of pineapple to be delivered. Bob's your uncle, everything's fine, disaster averted, and we can continue for another 15 years, first step, disengagement, order of play, etc. But I think we're going to stop there. You definitely, I think, have a pretty good idea of how Archipelago plays. I'm not showing anything. The only things I haven't shown are, once you've built a port or a market, you can take advantage of these things, but they are just better versions of the, uh, of the buying and selling on markets. That's basically what they are. See, I've, I've explored, I've reproduced, I've hired people, I've harvested, I've migrated, I've migrated across the ocean, I've built stuff, I've talked about secret objectives, I've talked about in-game conditions, uh, I've talked about negotiation, I think I've talked about all of it. Archipelago, thanks you guys. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can press the button in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Talk to you later.